You know, probably the question I get asked more than any other is how to questions. Questions like how do you rig baits? What line do you use in certain situations? How do you catch fish different times of the year? Well, this show is going to be a how to on summer fishing. Thanks for joining us. This is Fishing and Hunting Texas. From Mexico to Louisiana, the Red River down to the Laguna Madre, Texas is one big playground. Join professional bass fisherman and three time FLW Angler of the Year, Clark Wendland, as he takes you on some of the best outdoor adventures the Lone Star State has to offer. This is Fishing and Hunting Texas. Now, I've been professional bass fishing for nearly 27 years. And one thing about fishing on tour is, is you gotta be able to catch fish in nearly every season. The cool thing about fishing in the summer is, is you can catch fish either shallow or deep. The question is, where do you start? You know, when I'm fishing in the early summer, one of my very favorite ways to go is, is throw top water, especially early in the morning. You can always get a bite early in the morning because there's those shallow fish that are still up there. They're usually active early. You know, and there's a lot of different topwater baits that you can choose from. Um, I got several of them laid out here on the deck. First one's a buzz bait. You know, a buzz bait's a bait you can cover a lot of water with. It sits there and kind of gurgles in the water. You can fish it really fast or you can slow it down and reel it really slow. It also gets a lot of big bites. This is a 3 8 ounce Strike King buzz bait. The other baits that I've got here right now is a frog. This right here is a popping perch. Um, I've got it on an XML bass frog rod. You can see the frog rod right there. Um, this bait right here is a cupped bait. You can see the cupped lip of the bait. It actually works side to side or in real heavy cover. So if you're fishing around a lot of grass, logs, bushes, this bait can be a great option. When it works in the water, it'll go side to side, side to side. So you can pop, hop, you know, as long as your twitch is right, it'll go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth the whole way. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> that fish just came so far. I, mean, I see this just streak coming out. Just I'm going to tell y'all right now. Uh oh, he's on a tree. I'm going to tell you right now. Heck, I'm going to have to go down there and get this guy. Look <laughs> at that bait down in his mouth like that. And then I've got a popper. Now this bait right here is a bait that I can actually walk. It'll walk back and forth, back and forth, or I can actually fish it slow and just pop it. And just it'll, it'll just bloop. And you see the cup lip on it. The bait will just bloop along. And it just depends on the mood of the fish. Sometimes they want it worked fast where you're working it side to side. Sometimes they want it skipped along real fast. And sometimes they just want bloop, bloop, bloop. And so any of those different ways can work. And probably the most versatile of them all is actually a sexy dog. And this bait right here, when you look at the bait, uh, it's a cigar style bait. They've got a, a sexy dog and a sexy dog junior. This is actually a sexy dog right here. This bait, when it comes through the water, it works side to side, side to side. And you can make it go really fast or you can make it go really slow. As far as my setup goes, I've got it on an XML jerkbait topwater rod made by Cabela's. And the rod is critical because when you're using a topwater, you're jerking that rod, you're jerking that rod, it'll wear your arm out. If you sit there and do a, a walking bait all day, you're, you know, you're jerking it. It can easily wear your, your uh, wrist out. And so when you got the right rod, this rod's a really light rod. It's got the right tip action on it and it's really easy to work that bait. That fish just ate it. What I did was, is there's a shade spot up under there. And I threw in that shade. That sucker just yeah, ate this bait. Get up here, I want to show you how he ate this thing. <laughs> he totally bit it head first. Look at the bait. Strike King Sexy Dog. Top water is one of the funnest ways to fish, no doubt about it. You can catch a lot of good fish on it, and it's the way I always start first thing in the morning. Well, it's time now for a break. But when we come back, we continue breaking down how to target fish during the dog days of summer. Clark will show us how he uses his Garmin electronics to catch fish on deep structure. Right here 
on Fishing and Hunting Texas. As people who love the outdoors, we know what we stand for. We stand for fish, wildlife, and conserving the places they call home. We stand for the traditions we inherited and that we must pass on. We stand for great gear, fair prices, expert service, and memorable experiences. At Bass Pro Shops in Cabela's, we stand together for you. You sons of fishes. Ain't enough fish on this lake for two clubs. Really? Well, we see plenty of fish live with pan optics. Yep. Dang, we should get pan optics. Or maybe we'll just take yours. What's going on here? You boys have license? Yes, yes sir. sir. Nope. There he is. Oh, I got him. For 50 years, Ranger has led the way in innovative, high-performance designs, and we're raising the bar again with a bold new flagship line, the Ranger Z Comanche L Series. These rigs are custom crafted with a passion for perfection and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver domination at every level. The next generation Ranger L Series. Celebrate a legacy, 50 years in the making. Fishing and Hunting Texas is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Ranger Boat, still building legends one at a time. And by Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. Welcome back to this episode of Fishing and Hunting Texas. Now on today's show, host Clark Wendlet is sharing some of his favorite summertime secrets as he shows us how to catch fish during the heat of the year. One characteristic of summertime bass is they like to move out deep in search of cooler water temperatures and ample amounts of bait fish to feed on, making the task of locating them very difficult. Listen now as Clark explains how he relies on Garmin Electronics to find these deep water bass. You know, with today's electronics, one thing you've got is, is you've got a lot of options. On this unit right here, my Garmin GPS map 7612, I've got traditional sonar, I've got down view, side view, and I've got mapping. And so how do you set that unit up? Well, for me, I like setting it up where I can see all four screens. If you look at this unit right now, I've got mapping right there in the left corner, and I can make these panels any size. I like my mapping to be pretty big. I've got traditional sonar. I don't need it to be real big. I can see there's a ton of bait in that five to 10 foot range. I can also see that same bait on my down view, five to 10 foot range. And then I've got my side view where I'm looking out to the side of the boat. I've actually got it set up where I'm looking more on the left side of the boat than on the right side right now. You can set that up either way where you're looking right down the middle or you can look on the left or the right. To me, this gives me the most information I can get when I've just put my boat in the water. I may change it to just mapping in traditional sonar, to mapping in down view, to side view, down view. I can do lots of different things, but this is the place that I like to start. I think the electronics today can help you catch a ton more fish. Check this out, Garmin 7612. You know, I'll never forget, I fished a tournament on Lake Minnetonka in Minnesota. And in that tournament, I was catching fish like crazy shallow and it suited me just fine because I like fishing shallow and I like fishing fast. They were up around the grass and a lot of them were good fish. But then during the tournament, I get one big bite out, out on the ledges. And from that point on, I had a really great finish, top five out on the ledges. Here's a great ledge fishing tip. You know, when you're talking about deep water fishing, ledge fishing is what you hear a lot about from tournament guys where you're actually getting out, the fish usually move the very deepest in the early summer, June and July. And so what you're trying to do is get out there and figure out how to catch those fish. And how do you set up? Well, usually I'll have say six or seven baits rigged up. I'm gonna have a football jig. I'm gonna have a Carolina rig. I'm gonna throw a deep diving crankbait or maybe a couple different ones. I want a flutter spoon, one that I can jerk up off the bottom and it'll flutter down slowly. Usually a Carolina rig is a total must. coming up. That's a good one. Not 
quite as big as I thought. All of those baits can catch a ton of bass in the summer and you know when you're rigging those those baits up you got to know how deep you're trying to get well typically in texas you know i'm talking about 15 to 25 feet is kind of the depth range i'm looking at as far as lines go i usually use fluorocarbon i like sunline fluorocarbon usually sniper um, for deep water and the reason is is because fluorocarbon line when you're trying to get in deep water Fluorocarbon line is a dense line. It's something that cuts through the water well. It gets the bait down in that strike zone. And so I'm almost always using fluorocarbon. The bait gets down there really, really fast. It's down there going along the bottom the whole time and can catch you one just about the whole cast. When you're fishing deep structure, have a lot of rods rigged. There's, there's no reason to sit down and have to totally retie. You want the different classes of baits that I just mentioned rigged up, and then it's just get out there, look at your electronics. I'm gonna turn my electronics on. I'm gonna have it set up with all four screens, side view, down view, traditional sonar and mapping and then get out there and just hunt and and you can if you find an area that's somewhat got some either some fish where you can see them or the different structure you just get out there and start fishing it's really cool you know this pan optics what what really is helping me the most with it is is i can see that school of fish when i get in range of it and you'll see there's one right there when i got one I could see that, or I could see a good fish right before I hooked this one. I don't know if it was the same fish, but when I get close to that school, I can tell where they're at real easily. It's funny how lethargically those fish come in. They get up here, they go nuts. That water's hot. Pan optics right there. Deep water fishing, it's a way to catch a lot of fish. Well, coming up after the break, we continue breaking down summertime fishing as Clark discusses one of his go-to offshore baits, the deep diving crankbait. <laughs> Stay tuned. Every time we go fishing, you know we got to tie one on. In all honesty, when do I not tie one on? <laughs> Every time I go on the water, I love to tie one on. Every day of the week, I like to tie one on. You may not know this about me, but every once in a while, I've been known to tie one on. Come on, man. Join the Stray King team. All you got to do, tie one on. <laughs> I think I always tie one on. I love being out here on the tour. It's all about chasing the unseen in the toughest conditions. My gear is my edge, my advantage. It's what keeps me at the top of my game, year after year. Wiley X, with removable gaskets to block wind, dust, and peripheral light. At Sawyer, we use the best technology to make simple products that keep you going regardless of your journey. So whether you're boating, hiking, fishing, camping, or hunting, we keep you outdoors with a full lineup of products to both protect you and make the outdoors more enjoyable. Sawyer, we keep you outdoors. This portion of Fishing and Hunting Texas is brought to you in part by Cabela's. It's in your nature by Strike King, Sawyer, we keep you outdoors, and by TH Marine. Well, so far today, Clark has walked us through his plan of attack for catching fish during the summer months. He likes to start out shallow during the early morning with topwater, and as the day progresses, move out deep, focusing on his Garmin electronics. Now, but once you locate the fish on deep structure, what bait should you throw at them to trigger a bite? You know, when you're talking about fishing deep water structure, ledges, out on the drops, however you want to say it, one of the very best ways to catch big fish and numbers is a big deep diving crankbait. Strike King's got a series that makes it really simple. 
And the reason I say that is, is because they've got every size of them. They've got a 10XD, 8XD, 6XD, 5XD, and a 3XD. These baits dive, the reason they're XD is because they extra deep, they go down really, really fast. And why do you fish these baits? Well, the fish are usually biting shad that time of year. They're feeding on shad. And a crankbait is something, the reason you throw in a deep diving crankbait is you wanna get down there and hit the structure that the fish are on. So if there's a ledge down there that say 10 feet breaks into 20, you want your bait slamming the bottom in eight to 10 feet. So you'd either pick a 5XD or a 6XD. If you wanna get really deep, say hit the ledge in 23 feet where it drops to 35, then you might need a 10XD. If you wanna get 16 to 18, you use an 8XD. What you're trying to do with your bait is, is actually get the bait down there hitting the bottom. And as it hits the bottom, it's bouncing off stuff. It's erratic, whether there's stumps down there, whether there's brush, whether there's rocks. That's a good one. Ah, there we go. Strike King, 6XD, Chartreuse Sexy Shed, size of this guy. You know, people talk about a deep diving crankbait and a lot of people think, well, heck, that bait's gonna get hung all the time. Well, if you look at this bait, when it runs in the water, it's actually gonna be running about like this right here. And so the lip actually deflects off stuff and the hooks will not get hung very bad. You're gonna get hung occasionally, but you don't get hung nearly as bad as you would think you would. Now, as far as colors go, I usually like a shad color. If the water's a little bit stained, I'll use something with a little bit of chartreuse in it. I don't usually carry a whole lot of different colors. Those are my main ones. As far as my line setup, I typically like 12 pound test and I like fluorocarbon. And when I'm talking about line, I've got Super Sniper FC12 fluorocarbon. Um, this, is, this line right here is made by Sunline. I like a fluorocarbon because it cuts through the water really well. It's a dense line. It's not gonna hold my bait up. I'm trying to get the bait as deep as I can get it. This line will get it as deep as you want it. As far as your rod and reel setup goes, I like a Tournament ZX composite rod. This rod right here is called a crankshaft rod. If you flip it around, it's composite construction. It's not really, really sensitive. It's a little bit deader rod. And the reason you do that, if you fish a little bit deader rod, when you're cranking that thing along, the bait's bouncing into the bottom and one bites it, you want him to inhale that bait. You don't want to have the opportunity to jerk the bait away from the fish. So the composite construction will do that for you. They make this rod in three different sizes. This one's is seven foot, five inches. They've also got seven foot and they got one that's a little bit longer also. So you can fish any of those. You know, a deep diving crankbait will catch you some really big fish. You got to get it out there. You got to make a long cast, throw it a long way, crank it fast. The results can be incredible. Get up here. You know, you're throwing that big crankbait and you get hung out there. Well, to me, that's a big deal. Not only because those baits are expensive, but also because when you get bites on a certain bait, you want to throw that bait. You got confidence in it. TH Marine's got a tool that'll help you get all those baits unhung. You know, when you get a bait hung, at least in my case, I really want to get that bait back. And the reason is, it's not because how much that bait costs, which that is a good reason. Most of the time it's because I've got confidence in that bait. If I'm throwing it, it's a bait I got confidence in. I've caught some fish on it, it's got teeth marks on it. It's one that I really want to get back. There's a tool I use to get those baits back. TH Marine Money Pole. This rod right here will get down to about 20 feet. And I'm gonna show you just kind of how it works and how easy it is. If I'm really thinking I'm gonna be throwing a bait that, that I'm gonna get hung a lot, it extends, just telescopes out. I can extend it all the way. It goes to about 20 feet. I just put it on my line and then I run that down there. And you know, a lot of times you'll stick your rod in the water to get one unhung. But with this pole right here, just take it, push it, and boom. And then what I do is, is I just untwist it off the bait and there's the bait coming up right there. And I take my pole, put it up, and it really doesn't even fray my line. A lot of times I won't even retie. I'll just cast it right back out there and catch another fish. 
TNH Marine money pole. Every bit worth the investment. And next on Fishing and Hunting Texas, Clark has covered several of the baits he's tied on when fishing during the summer months, but he may have saved the best for last. Keep it tuned right here to find out what bait we're talking about. When I talk about Sunline, I think of one word, confidence. Sunline FX2 is what I use for all of my frogging and flipping. SX1 braid, which braid plays a little big part in, uh, in fishing line. Shooter, I'm going to use in those close quarter deals, like flipping and pitching. One of my favorite techniques in fishing the tournament trail is to fish offshore ledges. We have taken the, the questions out of the equation. Take my word for it. It works. It works, dude. HiViz Shooting Systems knows that your shooting performance matters in all conditions. All HiViz shooters experience faster target acquisition with our durable LightWave sights. Featuring easily interchangeable light pipes, LightWave sights give your eyes the exact sight picture you crave. Shoot HiViz. See what you've been missing. This portion of Fishing and Hunting Texas is brought to you in part by Engel Coolers, a legend in reliability, owner, perfection in hooks, and by Power Pole, swift, silent, secure. Welcome back to this episode of Fishing and Hunting Texas. We have spent most of today's show breaking down how to target hungry summertime bass, but sometimes these fish positioned on deep water structure can become lazy and lethargic. Host Clark Wendlet joins us now to show what baits to throw in order to entice these fish to bite. You know, in the summer months, one of the baits that you tend to fish a lot, especially off in deeper water, is a plastic worm. And there's two main plastic worms that I'm gonna talk about right now. One of them is called a Rage Anaconda, and I'm actually gonna rig it. The way I prefer to rig it Here's the bait right here. You look at, that's a big bait. It's about 10 inches long. Um, I'm gonna rig this actually Texas rig. And when I say Texas rig, the sinker is actually gonna butt up right up on the bait. And so when I rig it, you basically get in line on the bait, you go in about a half inch, pull the worm up over the hook, and then I'm gonna bury that hook, I'm gonna come all the way through and I'm just gonna skin hook it. This is a wide gap hook right here. And so that bait is totally straight. That's what I want with it. Now, when the, when the weight comes off that, there, there's what the worm looks like. And that thing in the water is killer because that tail just kind of moves. Now, when you, why do you rig two different worms? Well, the Texas rig, I typically am gonna fish either on deep ledges or on brush piles. If, if I'm going to actually fish in a brush pile, I prefer a Texas rig to a Carolina rig. A Carolina rig is really good on structure, and I'm going to show you that one also. Here's a Carolina rig right here. I've actually got it already rigged up. I've got about a three-foot leader. This is a tour-grade tungsten. It's a one-ounce weight. I've got a glass bead on it with a swivel. Real easy setup, about three foot of line. I like fluorocarbon the best. And then the bait, the bait I prefer to fish on a Carolina rig the most, especially on a lake that's got some big fish in it, is a Rage Hog. This bait has got a lot of different moving parts to it. It's got the little flappers coming off the side. It's got the, these right here actually move a little bit. And then you disconnect this right here from the little tails on the bottom and the bait gets real free and it, it just is a great Carolina rig bait. Now, why do you fish a Carolina rig? A Carolina rig is great in deep structure. Now, some people think that this bait actually floats up off the bottom. It actually doesn't. It stays on the bottom, but it's a subtle presentation because it's just basically just kind of pulling along. The weight is digging into the bottom. Usually gravel or rock is the best place to do it. Big flats is a great place when the cover's more spread out. A Carolina rig works really well. 
just one rough spot out there. And the only way I seem to get a bite on it is with a Carolina rig. I have thrown everything else. Both kinds of worms can catch really big fish. They always do catch big fish, but it just depends on the situation. You got a brush pile, you got a bunch of rock, maybe you throw a, a Texas rig. You, you got more scattered cover, go with a Carolina rig. Both of them can catch big fish. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial on summer fishing. If you get the opportunity, check out our website, like us on our Facebook page, message us, let us know where you'd like to see us fish all around this great state. We'd love to hear from you.